Welcome everyone to today's video. We're the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Elvira Boulay. <laughs> and in today's video, we're going to talk about consistency. Yes, that's right, consistency. Consistency is necessary in everything you do, in everything that you want to get better at, and that includes art as well. In this case, piano playing as well. But what's really consistency? It's very simple, right? It's something that you do on a regular basis. But for us, consistency when you want to actually develop a particular skill. In this case, piano playing. Develop your skills when you're playing piano. Consistency in that case would mean practicing on day-to-day -day basis. Because you can say that you can be consistent by practicing once a week, but that's not going to be enough. That's not the consistency we're talking about in this video because we're talking about consistency that actually builds skills. And skills can be built only when you do something on as regular basis as possible, as often as you possibly can. Very often our students, our clients would ask us what's necessary in order for me to develop and become better at piano playing. And our answer 99% of the time, if not 100% of the time, is consistency. You just have to do it every single day. Now, when we say every single day, we don't mean that you have to practice hours every single day. No, it's not about that. Consistency means doing something as little even as 15 minutes a day, but doing it regularly. Then you can expect good results. Now, if we think about that, why do we actually have to do something every single day instead of, for example, twice a week? Well, it's very simple because when you do something on more irregular basis, you're still consistent. You can say once a week, if I practice once a week, but do it every single week, I'm in a way consistent, right? Well, that's, that's true. You are consistent, but you're not developing skills. Why? Because the mind is not going to be able to remember what you've done previously. But if you do something every single day, you're going to remind yourself what you've done. And so you're going to start making connections and your skills are going to improve. So the more often you do it, that's what I call true consistency every single day. And in the worst case, if you have to skip a day, that's okay. But every single day, you're going to keep making connections. You're going to keep reminding yourself, your mind, what has to be improved and how to improve that. So remember, if you practice once a week, several hours, there is no guarantee and most likely next week when you go and practice several hours again, your mind wouldn't have remembered what you've done. You wouldn't have developed any muscle memory and so there would be no connections to be made. I often hear things from our clients like, you know, yes, that I practiced something and then the next day I seem to have forgotten everything. And I, say, I say to them, that's something very normal. Can you imagine what would happen if you practice once a week or twice a week? You wouldn't remember anything. Even with us, with Elvira, when we practice something on day-to-day -day basis, the next day, the passages just could not work. It's necessary repetition over and over and over again until something is established, until something works on regular basis and then the passages start working. Now, I'm sure you're kind of getting the picture. Consistency is absolutely essential if you want to build any skill. But at the same time, consistency honestly is also one of the biggest struggles. Even for us, we struggle sometimes with being consistent. And often the reason for that is actually that as soon as you start doing something on a day to day basis, it, it becomes less fun sometimes. You know, it becomes sometimes boring. It becomes sometimes you don't feel like doing it. If you do it once a week, you kind of, you know, it's always fun, it's inspirational. But as soon as something becomes kind of a must that you have to do it every day, you can struggle with feeling inspired to practice. And because of this, because it's actually difficult to be consistent, one of the most difficult things, we have some tips for you today in this video. And to just add to what Elvira just said, a lot of us actually confuse consistent practice and fun. Like I hear things from people like, you know, it has to be fun. We often hear people say that, you know, if it's not fun, you shouldn't do it. And I can tell you, and probably if you talk to anybody who is successful at something, anybody who has good skills at something, they will tell you that, first of all, they work on a day-to-day basis. And they will tell you that it is impossible every day to have fun. 
it just doesn't work that way. Sometimes it's just a routine. You go behind the piano and you just get your 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour, whatever it is, whatever amount it is that you practice, you get it done. That guarantees that there will be days that are super inspired, but there are going to be always days that are just dull. You can't do something on a day-to-day basis and have fun with it all the time. So if you're planning to start playing piano, learning piano, if you're already doing it, and if you're judging yourself or thinking like, well, that, that doesn't seem fun every time, just don't go into it with the wrong idea. And now don't continue playing piano with the wrong idea. Keep in mind, accept that there will be days that are just not as fun and you're going to feel much better about it. But we can promise you one thing, the more consistent you are, the more fun you'll have overall. That's absolutely true. Now, since a lot of us are struggling, even, even us, we're struggling with consistency, prof is just tough. We decided to make this video and now we're going to move to a little bit more practical part, give you a few tips that we think can help you improve your consistency and feel more confident about it. So what I think is priority number one is that you pick a, a time to be consistent, you pick an amount of time to practice that you can imagine, you can envision yourself always being able to keep. So imagine the most busy day, imagine you have to travel, imagine you have to, imagine you're sick, imagine the most difficult day to be consistent and imagine how many minutes would you be able to complete no matter what. And this also obviously depends on your goal. So my minimum amount of piano practice as a professional is one hour. That is the minimum amount that I will always complete no matter how busy I am. However, if I have a hobby, right, I like to play the violin for fun, my minimum amount of time there is 15 minutes because I'm not a professional at that, but I still want to be consistent. So pick your minimum amount on the most busy day that you can, can possibly envision, pick what you think you really will be able to achieve and pick it also according to your goals. Now I just gave you the example with the violin. For example, I have a minimum of 15 minutes there. And I think the danger of picking a time to be consistent with, at least for me, is judgment that it's too few. I know that, for example, I would do far better if I practiced 45 minutes daily violin. I would get far better results. At the same time, I also know I'll not be able to keep that up for a consistent amount of time. So be aware that you might get judgment. You might get these voices in your head saying it's not good enough. I promise you, if you're doing it consistently, first of all, you'll be getting great results. And second of all, once you're used to 15 minutes, if it's a real important thing for you, if it's a real priority, you can always, once you're used to those 15 minutes, grow from there. So ignore that judgment, just ignore it and keep to that minimum amount of time that you think you'll be able to achieve it and keep to that for a long period of time, six months, one year, keep to it for a long time. We've discovered that in general, achieving results in any area, you have to be, you have to be very pragmatic. You can be emotional about it and when you decide that you want to practice like crazy every day, that's an emotional decision and um, you won't be able to sustain that. Most of the people are not able to sustain that. Now I wanted to also add that if you're a person who thinks that if you, if you decide that you're going to practice two hours a day and if you really can handle that, I congratulate you, you have to do that. We are not discouraging you from doing a lot. We do not encourage doing something for just a few days a lot and then stopping for the rest of the year because you're depressed and because you think you suck and because you think that nothing works. We strongly discourage that because you, first of all, you're not developing anything with piano you start getting the wrong idea about piano, you start actually even disliking piano. And at the end of the day, you also you have to ask yourself the question, what kind of a person are you becoming? So it's an emotional decision to do too much and then not be able to handle it. You have to be practical, you have to be pragmatic and think of what produces results. What's going to produce results is exactly what Elvira said. Doing something six months to a year even if everybody is laughing at you that you practice only 15 minutes, you are going to get much further than somebody who is practicing a lot of time and then he just gives up and then picks it up again and then gives up again. Just keep at it, be practical, be pragmatic and you will see results. So tip number one was pick an amount of time. Start with 15 minutes, let's say that's the minimum. I think almost anybody can practice 15 minutes a day. 
that's something just you pick that time now of course if you're a little bit more advanced you can discuss also with your teacher you can sit down and think to yourself a little bit what can i handle and you have to handle that for six months to a year you envision yourself doing that and you ask yourself the question can i do that every single day unless you're dead or something like that then you can skip it we allow you that so i think the second tip which really helps me also be consistent is never make exceptions so for me once i make one exception it's just all downhill from there you know i really really strongly recommend that you just never make an exception Even, i by the way have one thing yeah. here to add about exceptions what we have actually discovered works for us very well you can even decide on how many exceptions you can make each month. Mm -hmm. We've discovered that if you succeed to have a success rate of completing your practice approximately 90% each month, which means that each month has 30, 31 days, and I think it's on average like three days, three or four three, days. I don't yeah. remember how, how much exactly it is, but I think it's like around three days a month that you can skip your practice you are going to still develop. So I just wanted to mention that this could be an exception that you have a few There's an exception to the making of exceptions? Exactly, <laughs> something like that, that you have some kind of a, I don't know if you call it leeway, some, some yes. freedom that you don't feel that, you know, that it's also unrealistic to think like 365 days a year that you can do that. So maybe that will give you, for me personally, I don't know for you if that also worked, but for me, it gave me a lot of freedom to know that every month I can allow myself three to four days to have really even skip my practice. It didn't damage my consistency. Okay. Well, I think that um, you know yourself best. So yeah. if you're, for me, it works this way. I never make an exception, but like Dimitar says, there will be always a day, for example, that I wake up at six in the morning and I'm gone until 10 in the evening and I'm busy in all that time. There's no piano. Well, good luck practicing, you know? Exactly. Of course, there's always going to be days like that. And like Dimitar said, they're like, you can still keep to 90%. So I don't actively make exceptions. But I will be maybe once sick, really, really sick, unable to practice, or I'm traveling. So automatically, yes, 100% uh, of the time is, uh, well, maybe possible for some people, but well, we are consistent, let's say 90% of the time, which is still uh, an enormous amount, by the way. Yeah, I just made it for myself because that I learned that that works very well for me. That I, uh, That's why I mentioned this. Perhaps it doesn't work for you or you, you could be like, oh, that's a nice idea. Do whatever you want, of course. But just for me, that worked very nicely because I know that I have these three days and I can spread them throughout the month. And if I really don't feel like practicing, I know that it's not going to harm my progress to skip those three to four days because if I hit 90% consistency that month, 90% of all the days having practiced, I know that I'm developing and I don't have any issue with that. Okay, it I gives like me that. some freedom. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, but everybody's different, like you said. So do it the way it works. The most important is don't make, don't make random exceptions. Don't become a person who is just, you know, today, I just don't feel like I, I won't do it. But what if you get sick or what if you want to make progress? So... Okay, I like that. Maybe to sum up, we say, uh, don't make exceptions, but if you do... <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's funny. But if you do, actually have a plan, because for you, it's not necessarily an exception that you're making. No, an exception is an impulsive decision, remember that. That's still and my it, plan. That's still exactly. my plan. It's a pragmatic so plan that works for me. You planned it out in a yep. uh, like ahead of time. Absolutely. And I mean, like, don't make an exception exactly like you're saying, I'm not feeling like no. today. That's an impulse. You're deviating from the plan, right? So maybe plan in a several days to have in the month, whatever suits your goals, to have several days that you allow yourself not to practice, but also write that down. Because yeah. I know Dimitar writes that down. Write it down. So then it's part of the plan and it doesn't really feel like an exception. Don't make impulsive exceptions. Make sure that if you feel like you do need exceptions during the month, plan them in in advance. And you'd be surprised if you write down the exceptions, you'd be surprised how many people say, I, I was consistent. Well, if you if you start writing things down, you will see that you are probably one of the most inconsistent <laughs> people out there. So once I started writing things down, I saw that I just skipped too much and that, that just helped me a lot, having everything clearly written down. 
And the third and last tip we wanted to give you is have a practice schedule. We have one video that we made on a practice routine. We can probably put it somewhere here on the screen. You can see that video and we're planning in the future to make more uh, piano workouts as we call them. But having a, that, that has to do a lot with uh, having a practice schedule. You have to have a schedule because that helps a lot with being consistent. And what I mean by having a practice schedule is just knowing what to practice, when to practice it, knowing what you've practiced already so you can rotate your pieces. That creates a lot of structure and so it makes it easier for you to be consistent. If you have to practice today but you have no idea what to do, it might feel really like a very confusing thing even, like where do I start? I mean, I, I go behind the piano, what do I do? No, you, you go behind the piano and you have your routine. You And part of your routine is going to be, uh, let's call it technical, dull, boring, work, whatever you want to call it. I like for us. technical work. Actually. Exactly, me, me too. <laughs> but let's say that there, there are things you don't like that you have to do. Okay, you have to get them done. But you also have in your practice routine a fun time. You have a fun time just to hear what your progress is, like how you're playing. So that's, that's having a practice schedule, practice routine. That's going to help a lot with your consistency. And that includes, of course, variety of ways to practice. We've made some videos and we're going to make many more videos in the future of how you can practice and that helps also a lot with the consistency, just having things very clear in front of you. It's not for nothing that we actually called it a piano workout, because imagine going to the gym and having no idea what you're gonna train that day. Nobody does that. So don't also go behind the piano like that. Have a clear plan, it will definitely help you out with the consistency. So let's sum up the three tips we had today for you. So the first one is pick an amount. You have to have an amount, that you can maintain under all any circumstances under any circumstances starting with 15 minutes and then you discover what that amount is what was the second point that uh don't make an exception or at least if you need some days off during the month plan that and write it down yeah so that's the second don't make any exception you have to figure out how to do that everybody is different make sure that you know yourself better you know yourself well and know how to not make exceptions or how to plan them and the third and last tip was practice schedule make sure that you know what you're going to do today in your piano practice that's going to make it much easier now wait a second in return you have to do something for us click the like button and subscribe for our channel because in this way you will help us a lot by growing the channel you can also share the video with your friends or anybody who you might think that would like it would enjoy it and also don't forget that you can follow us on Instagram as well. We try to upload there very regularly. Our Instagram is absolutely the same name as our YouTube channel, just Dimitrov Boulay. So feel free to join us there as well. For those of you who live in the Netherlands, uh, the concerts are starting up again. So check out our website, see if we're playing nearby and come and uh, visit us live. Anyway, this was all for this video and for today from us. For us, recording this video for you was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.